When I was a kid, I used to play this game, Password. And the secret password is always invisible, hidden, until you slid the paper into the sleeve. And then the secret word is revealed. Well, what if the secret words aren't part of a kid's board game, but instead on a crumbling ancient manuscript? Correspondent Beth Nissen caught up with investigators who are uncovering secret messages that have stayed hidden for 2,000 years. In these vaults, on these shelves, in these boxes at Oxford University, ancient clues, 2,000 years old, to a glorious human past. Wrapped in printed paper, fragments of ancient paper, pieces of the DNA of Western civilization. Here's one that contains a large page of Homer's Odyssey, still with quite a bit of mud and sand clinging to it. These are only a few of the faded fragments found buried near the outskirts of what was, at around the turn from B.C. into A.D., a mid-sized capital city in Greek-ruled Egypt, the city of Oxyrhynchus, actually found buried in the Oxyrhynchus city dump in rubbish mounds. There can be more Homer, new pieces of Sophocles, Euripides, other authors who were being read in antiquity. You never really know what's going to come out of the box or whether what comes out of the box can be read. Abrasion, dirt, clay, silt, an awful lot can go wrong when something is buried underground for 2,000 years. Yet somehow, buried above the water tables and beneath the dry sands of Egypt for all those centuries, almost half a million of these papyri fragments survived, these pieces of ancient paper made from papyrus. Papyrus is a plant. It is a reed that grows almost exclusively along the banks of the Nile. You shave that stalk into thin strips, lay them parallel to each other, lay strips running perpendicular to them. You pound it or press it such that the cell walls break down, cellulose seeps out, creating a kind of gooey natural glue that binds the strips together, which can then be um, pressed, polished, and written on. The stuff is really quite durable, in a way more durable than the paper you're used to taking notes on today. The tons of this reedy paper found at Oxyrhynchus documented the daily life of an ancient city's markets and businesses and courts. We have marriage contracts, divorce contracts, tax declarations, census registers, uh, hate mail, dinner invitations. We have letters home to mom. You name it, we have it on papyrus. Thousands more of the Oxyrhynchus fragments were unreadable, soiled, Grimy. Because this is a rubbish dump, things get charred if, if burning waste was put on top of them, or stained. Or like this fragment, which looks at first like the work of, say, Jackson Pollock of Crete. The only readable word of Greek is just visible at the very bottom. And you can read Christos. Yeah, there, there's Christos. Chi Rho Sigma with the bar above it, so that's the abbreviation for Christos. You know it's a Christian text. But much of it is totally illegible and papyrologists assume there are letters there. Papyrus was too expensive to throw away unused and often had writing on both sides. But texts like this were a tantalizing, frustrating mystery. But really, you're never going to be able to, to publish a text like this. You can look at that under the microscope as much as you like, but it's just a, a complete mess. What papyrologists really needed was this an equivalent to Superman's X-ray vision, a way to see through whatever was on the surface of papyri, ancient food stains, burn marks, mummy paint, see through to the writing underneath. As the ancient Greek scientist Archimedes is said to have said from his bath, Eureka. It's called multispectral imaging, a technology developed by NASA to see through clouds of gas in space. It was a significant step forward when a scholar at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory decided to apply the technology to texts. Ancient texts written on papyri. The project today, see if multispectral imaging can help scholars at the University of California at Berkeley read part of an account of the Trojan War by the poet Dictus of Crete, a part obscured by a large reddish stain. 
Some people think it's a spill, a chemical spill perhaps, or a spot of wine that was dropped on it. Even the best paparologists who've worked on this uh, are usually not able to pick out any more than a few scattered letters in here, and even at that, they feel like they're guessing. The fragile fragment is put on a moving imaging bed under a scientific grade digital camera, which captures high definition images of the fragment through a succession of color filters, one filter at a time, a dozen different filters in all. Each individual filter allows only a certain portion of the light spectrum through. The light in the range of the spectrum visible to the naked eye reflects off whatever is on the surface of most of the papyri pieces, the stains, dirt, mummy paint, whatever. The camera can't see much more through these filters than the eye can, which isn't much. Isn't this an area where they really have not been able to make any readings at all? Exactly. I mean, if you need but to results see. tend to be better using the filters that let in the range of the light spectrum the human eye cannot see. I've seen the best results in the infrared at 950 nanometers. Light in the infrared part of the spectrum, invisible to the naked eye but not the camera, is more likely to pass through what's on the papyrus surface to the ink underneath. Surface stains and dirt fade away. The inked letters appear. Black magic. Ink, which is pretty much pure carbon, it's made out of soot mixed with glue will absorb all of the infrared and so it'll come out black. Um, that's fantastic. Great, it really looks that there's no stain at all. Every time they see this 21st century technology work on first or second century fragments, paparologists are thrilled, or as thrilled as paparologists get. None of us is really inclined to, you know, give high fives and, uh, and celebrate too much, but we were really pleased. They've been pleased with multispectral imaging at Oxford, too, home of the world's largest collection of ancient papyri, all those fragments excavated from the Oxyrhynchus city dump. They have as many as 500,000 fragments, but only about 1% have been read and published by the few scholars working on them. Uncounted thousands are illegible, in shreds, soiled. There are fragments there that we've pretty much completely given up all hope of ever being able to read. Like that Jackson pollock fragment that had the word Christos on it. We put it under the multispectral imaging camera and all of a sudden the background completely drops out and wherever there was ink, you can read the ink as clear as the day it was written. And what was written? A passage from the New Testament, St. Paul's Epistle to the Romans, chapter 14, verses 7 to 9. And then, Estutogar Christos epethenen, um, for this reason did Christ die, and it is now our, our earliest copy for these verses. We did have another third century papyrus of the Epistle to the Romans, but it actually is very fragmentary. But now we, we've, we've got the, the complete text of these verses in a late second or uh, early third, perhaps, century copy. I don't know how long we have until the things sitting in shoeboxes in this or that university turn to dust, but we've got to get rolling. There are a great many, I mean many thousands, of papyri that are sitting in boxes in dark hallways waiting to be read.